similar polygons. We can say that two polygons are similar when there is a correspondence between two polygons such that their corresponding angles are congruent and the lengths of their corresponding sides are proportional. So here we have polygon ABCD and polygon JKLM. And angle A is congruent to angle J, angle B congruent to angle K, angle C congruent to angle L, and angle D congruent to angle M. And we also have the statement of proportionality that says that when you compare the length of side AB to JK, it's proportional to side BC compared to KL, proportional to CD compared to LM, and DA compared to MJ. So if all the lengths of the sides are proportional and all the angles are congruent, then we can say that polygon ABCD is similar to polygon JKLM. The simplified ratio of the corresponding sides is called the scale factor of the two polygons. Here we're given the length and width of three different rectangles, and we need to determine which two are similar. So we need to test the length and width of rectangle A, B, and C to see which ones share the same ratio. So when you compare the two side lengths, 5 over 7, we want to make sure we simplify that as much as possible. So 5 over 7 cannot be simplified anymore, so that's as far as we can go. In rectangle B, we have a length of 8.5 and a width of 11. So when we compare these two, the problem that we run into is that we have a decimal on top, and we don't want to have decimals in our final ratio. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 10 so that we can get rid of that decimal. So this becomes 85 over 110, and that reduces to 17 over 22. And then lastly, in rectangle C, we can compare 10 over 14, which simplifies to 5 over 7. So when you compare the final ratio of the length and width of the three rectangles, it's only rectangle A and rectangle C that have the same ratio. So we can conclude that rectangle A and C are similar to each other. Now I want you to try that same process with example two and check back with me when you're finished. Now with rectangle A, because we're dealing with fractions and you don't want to compare a fraction over another fraction, I just went ahead and multiplied both of them by two that cancels out the denominator, so then we can just compare 3 over 7. Rectangle B should reduce to 3 over 7, and rectangle C is 1 over 3. So hopefully you found that rectangle A and rectangle B are similar. Here we want to list all pairs of congruent angles and write the statement of proportionality for the figures. So here we're going to use our similarity statement it is very much like our congruent statement, which lists all the corresponding angles in order and the corresponding segments. So listing out the pairs of congruent angles, the first pair of angles, angle G is going to be congruent to angle T. Angle R, the second one, is congruent to angle F, the second one. And then angle M is going to be congruent to angle D, the third one. And then when it comes to the sides, remember we're going to be listing a statement of proportionality. So we have three sides on these triangles, so I'm going to prepare it this way. And then we have segment GR compared to TF. And then segment RM corresponds to FD. And then segment MG is going to correspond to DT. So I want you to go ahead and use the similarity statement in example 2 to list the pairs of congruent angles and the statement of proportionality and then check back with me when you're finished. Hopefully you wrote that angle A is congruent to angle M, angle B congruent to angle N, angle C congruent to angle O, and angle D congruent to angle P. Then your proportionality statement should say 
the length of AB over MN is equal to the length of BC over NO is equal to the length of CD over OP is equal to the length of DA over PM. Now it's okay if you didn't necessarily write your angle pairs and your statement of proportionality in the same order. Just make sure that each set of segments or each pair of angles are grouped together accordingly. Here we're going to take a look at the diagrams that were given and decide whether the polygons are similar based on the information that they give us. If so, write a similarity statement. So remember, there are two things that must be true about similar polygons. They have to have congruent angles and proportional sides. So first, let's check the angles. We have this angle marked with 2 that corresponds with this angle marked with 2, a right angle corresponding with the right angle. And if you remember our third angles theorem about triangles, it says if you have two pairs of congruent angles, that third pair of angles must be congruent because the three angles have to add up to 180. So we have congruent angles. So I'm just going to make this note. We have congruent angles. And so we need to check for proportional sides. So let's go ahead and make that statement of proportionality. And this time, instead of putting the segments, we're going to put in the actual lengths of them. So this side, 9, corresponds to this side of 6. This side of 12 corresponds to this side of 8. And then this side of 15 corresponds to this side of 10. So remember, just make sure you have all the measurements of one triangle across the top with the corresponding measurements of the other triangle across the bottom. Then we just want to simplify these. 9 over 6 reduces to 3 over 2. 12 over 8 reduces to 3 over 2. And 15 over 10 reduces to 3 over 2. So since the statement of proportionality is correct, we can go ahead and write a similarity statement. So we can say that triangle XAR is going to be similar to triangle, and again we need to follow that same order. So we went angles marked 1, right angle 2, so we go 1, right angle 2, which is MNT. So I want you to take that same idea, follow those same steps, check for the congruent angles, and for the statement of proportionality, and then if the two polygons are similar, then you can go ahead and write a similarity statement. When you're finished, just come and check back with me. So with example two, you start off checking out the angles. You have four right angles compared to four right angles. So all the angles are congruent. But when you check the statement of proportionality and you reduce the sides, 5 fourths is not equal to 3 halves, which is not equal to 5 fourths and not equal to 3 halves. So since the sides are not proportional, our answer is that these are not similar. And you cannot write a similarity statement for them. The perimeters of similar polygons theorem. It states that if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters is equal to the ratios of their corresponding sides. So if you were to take all the side lengths of one polygon and compare that to all the side lengths of the other polygon together, that simplified ratio would be the same as the simplified ratio of each of the corresponding sides. In the diagram below, we're given that polygon ABCD is similar to polygon GHIJ. And we're going to use those diagrams to help answer these questions. So when it asks us to find the scale factor of ABCD to GHIJ, remember that is the simplified ratio of the corresponding sides. So first we need to find a pair of corresponding sides that where we're given measurements for both. So AB is 8. It corresponds to GH, but we have a variable Y. That's not going to be helpful. BC is labeled 11, but HI does not have a measurement. CD has a variable, so again, that side is not going to help us. The only pair of corresponding sides where we're given measurements for both are AD and GJ. 
so we're going to use that 11 to 5.5 and again because we have that decimal we want to multiply by 10 and then we want to reduce so we actually have a scale factor of 2 to 1 so I just like to write the scale factor inside of the polygon to let me know that every measurement of 2 here for the sides corresponds to a measurement of 1 here. So this is going to be our scale factor of polygon ABCD to GHIJ. In the second one, it asks us to find the scale factor of GHIJ to ABCD. So instead of doing all of the work but backwards, all we need to do is take the scale factor from number 1 and then just switch it. So every measurement of one unit on GHIJ corresponds to two units on ABCD. Next we need to find the values of X and Y. So we're going to find one at a time. So first let's locate X. X is found here on polygon ABCD and then this side corresponds to this side that's marked with 8 on the other polygon. So we're going to set up a ratio x over 8. Now in order to solve for that x we're actually going to set up a proportion. Now x over 8, remember we said that every two units on the bigger polygon is going to correspond to one unit on the smaller one. So since 2 goes with the x, we're going to put the 2 on top and the 1 goes with 8, we're going to put that on the bottom and we're going to set these equal to each other. Then we're going to cross multiply to solve for x. So this is how you solve proportions. We're going to cross multiply, so you get 1 times x, which is x, 8 times 2, which is 16. And then here is our value for x. We're going to take that same idea to find the value of y so here we have y up on the top of the smaller one and then that corresponds to 8 and the bigger one. So if we put y over 8 then again we're going to set up a proportion using the scale factor. y corresponds to 1 so that goes on top with the y and 8 corresponds to 2 so 2 goes on the bottom and we set our equal sign so that we have our proportion. And then Again, we'll cross multiply to solve. 2 times y gives us 2y equal to 8 times 1. And then to solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by 2. That cancels, and we're left with y is equal to 4. So we've used proportions to find the missing side lengths. Next, we need to find the perimeter of each polygon. So in the big polygon on top, we have 11 plus 8 plus 11 plus x, which we found to be 16. And if we add that up, we get a perimeter of 46. And then for the smaller polygon, we have 5.5 plus y, which is 4, plus the 8 on the bottom and the last side that we're missing is not measured. Now if you take a look carefully you'll notice that in the bigger polygon you have these two sides are congruent. That means that these two sides the corresponding ones would also have to be congruent which makes this also 5.5 and that gives us a grand total of 23. So then we need to find the perimeter of ABCD to GHIJ. So if you compare the perimeter of ABCD to GHIJ, that reduces to 2 to 1. And again, if you really look closely, this is the same ratio as the scale factor of ABCD to GHIJ. And that's the theorem that we talked about on the page before we did this example. Here we're given that each pair of polygons is similar and we need to find the unknown variables. So we need to find the values of x and y and we're going to need to use the corresponding sides to set up proportions. So first we need to find the corresponding sides that have measurements for both. 
So the only side on this triangle that has a measurement is the side of six. And based on the angle markings, that's gonna correspond to this side of four. So we're gonna use that to find our scale factor. So four compared to six, that's gonna to reduce to two over three. And again, I'm just gonna put that scale factor inside to remind me the scale factor of the smaller triangle to the bigger triangle. Then let's go ahead and set up a proportion so we can solve for one unknown side at a time. The side labeled with X corresponds to the side labeled six. So again, we're gonna set up a proportion. If we put X over six, then we're gonna need to put three over two, that scale factor. And then we can cross multiply. Two times X is equal to six times three, which is 18. And then we can divide both sides by 2, and we get x equals 9. Then we're going to take that same idea with side y, which corresponds to the side of 8. And if we put y over 8, that's going to correspond to 3 over 2. And again, we'll cross multiply. 2 times y is equal to 8 times 3, which is 24. We divide both sides by 2, and then we'll get y is equal to 12. So in the second example, again, we have these isosceles triangles, and the corresponding sides that are similar are the 8 and 10. So we're going to use that to set up our scale factor. 8 over 10 simplifies to 4 over 5. So again, I'll write it inside of here, but that's just our scale factor, remember. So when we're trying to find the side length of y, it corresponds to the side of 10. Now because these are isosceles triangles, we know that the sides are gonna be the same. So these sides are actually both y and these are both 10. So we'll set up that proportion, 10 over y, and that corresponds to four over five. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. Five times 10 is 50. Y times four is equal to four Y. Then when we divide both sides by four, we get Y is equal to 12.5. Now when we're trying to find X, X is an angle measure, so things are a little different. Remember, with similar polygons, the sides are proportional, but the angles are congruent. So we have to find the angles in a different way. And this takes us back to how we found angle measures inside of a triangle. Now because these are isosceles triangles, that means that the base angles are congruent. So this angle is also x. Now since the corresponding angles are congruent, that means these base angles are also x. So the way that we can solve for x is we have two angles labeled x and one angle labeled 42. So those three angles have to add up to 180. So then we can solve this equation. So we get 2x plus 42 equals 180. And then when you subtract 42 from both sides, you have 2x is equal to 138. And then divide both sides by two, and we have x is equal to 69. That's it for this lesson. We'll work on some more practice in class.